In this latest saga, we have joining us in the studio now public affairs anal analyst Olade Indiario. It's good to see you again. Welcome to uh, the program. Good morning, Mr. I miss Ario. you guys. Right. And we've missed you too. Oh, well, I'm glad to be back. And you appear particularly excited about this, this ongoing uh, yeah, drama that we see. What, what ticks you? What, what, what yeah, is uh, standing I, out I was for you? in Gambia, I was in Bulgaria, and everybody was asking questions about our uh, anti corruption agency not being able to arrest without drama. And that, for me, it's a no-no. And that's where I'm going to be taking up EFCC. We've always been talking against media trials. Um, your job is not to make noise about anything, but we want to see performance. They could have handled Bellows case uh, in other ways. How? Whereby it wouldn't have deteriorated into calling, I mean, threatening to call for the military, and then the president getting involved and all of that. You know, we're not the only country in the world that has a corruption agency anyway. And I don't think, I've not read any report anywhere where they so operated. How Remember else, that have, so the, the EFCC last two years, sorry, the last how else two else so the EFCC had handled this? Well, they, they, according to the chairman, he said they put the phone call through to him. <clears> yeah. And then he didn't call that to so come and meet him in his village. In his shoes, we will go and meet him in his village. Yeah, we, I mean, we're not going there to drink tea, but to get him arrested. Mm -hmm. And we do it as nicely as possible. In most places abroad, when the police is talking to you, they are as um, nice as they can be until they get you into their place, and then the story can change. You understand? Apart from that, um, for me, EFCC is still not a success story. Despite the, I mean, it's over 20 years now, and so much has been, you know, so much money has been <laughs> spent there. Why? Because we shouldn't be having all these um, street stories about performance. You know, I'm not, I mean, if they are doing well, as expected, EFCC should be the deterrent, should be the one. I mean, the fear of EFCC should stop people from stealing money. But nobody seems to fear EFCC. They still continue stealing. Okay, so I rather EFCC should rebuild their image, rebuild and rearrange the structure, to strategize, whereby they will be the reason why people will not steal. Not that they will not, you are not be telling me you have, you have had 1,000 solid convictions. I don't need convictions. Uh, I don't want people to stay that their money. Perform. Let it strategize people with, in eh? what sense? Sorry? We strategize in what sense? Let me tell you, the base of EFCC, is to go after people who steal money. Mm -hmm. If they have been doing that conscientiously <coughs> and religiously and delivering, people will be afraid of EFCC. You know, the mantra will be there and say the fear of EFCC is the beginning of wisdom. But everybody seems to fear EFCC. No. And then when they come up with all this media try and all that, it puts me off. We can, you can do better than that. You can establish... Um, your, your authority, your performance rating, whereby people will be scared to touch public funds. That's where I'm coming okay, from. So, two things for me. Um, EFCC has long asserted that while it is out to prosecute and at the same time limit the way crimes are being perpetrated, especially, uh, you know, the... the obstacle of a politically exposed person, right. it insists that corruption is fighting back. And in the case of Yaya Bello and, you know, the plethora of cases in courts, all these, you know, accused persons, uh, exposed or otherwise, are innocent until proven guilty. Right. Even Latif Fagbemi, the uh, AGF, yeah. said the law also avails defendants their legal options with Absolutely. which to seek protection, right. uh, you know, from uh, the EFCC. All you need to do, you, that is Yahya Bello, is surrender and avail yourself of the legal means, you know. After all, you are innocent until Absolutely. proven guilty. Absolutely. So uh, can we also explore that? While you talk about, you know, the failings of the EFCC, Let's also turn our attention to Yaya Bello and, you know, all these ways, this, this protection that he's seeking right. within and outside the courts. You know, I've said it several times, and I'll say it again, that even before independence until date, 
we've not been largely blessed with leaders or the materials for leadership. Instead, we've been putting all manner of characters in position of power, either through election or through appointments. I don't want to say, but I'm going to give kudos to uh, Ayo Deli Fayoshi when he was a Kitsisi governor. He was invited, and he told them I'll be there before 12 noon. 11.30 that day, Fayoshi walked with to... With a shirt. With a shirt. Yes, see, I'm here. I'm here. Oh. He walked <laughs> proudly to EFCC, and they welcomed him. I'm sure they had conversation. There was no noise about... Uh, running up and down, somebody trying to protect him or shield him. You understand? This young man, Yarabelo, I never, because today, to see the youngest governor that we've ever had in Nigeria, and to now turn things this way, for me, it's, uh, it's unbecoming. Painfully, his successor now became his protector. They came for him, and that used his immunity to take him away from that environment. It still remains an allegation. Though. Hey, but that, if you saw the video, it's available online. Right. There is, I mean, there's no gain saying about it. It should never have happened. It should never have happened. And as it is, I mean, when I heard that the president said he should go and surrender himself, I was like, who the hell is this guy that will take the president before he will know you have to do the right thing. So do you think it was an invitation. Anybody can be invited. Like, I've been invited before by the police. From, from what, what you said earlier about the governor shielding him, allegedly, do you think it's a criminal offense? It is a criminal offense. Anywhere in the world, when somebody is running away from the law and you shield that person, you are as guilty as the person. But as the governor, uh, if it because is Because the immunity clause. They, yes, they will because wait, of the look, immunity clause. They will wait for him. He won't be governor for life. Yeah, if okay, they have so to, while he's governor... Then the House of Assembly, if they, are, if they know what they are doing, they can impeach him. Yeah. It was not right. It was wrong. And what is wrong can never be right. Mm. I stand by that. I may not be a lawyer, but I'm not a dummy. And I know these things. Mm. I mean, for crying out loud, we all are exposed to different crimes. And we see how things are done. We cannot be different from the entire world. The annoying thing is, you know what you misbehave here? With the world now being one global village, in seconds, the whole world gets to know, and they will be asking questions. Are we not tired of dragging the country into the mud over little things? Okay. Politically, uh, what um, scenarios do you see? Because Yaya Bello is of the APC. Of course, he handed over to another APC right. uh, member in, in, in the president of Ododo. Uh, the government of the day at the federal level is, is APC, and we've... With, uh, the decision of the EFCC to arrest him or to arraign him, this week we understand that he even had a meeting with the president and, and all of that. Uh, what implications do you see this, you know, shaping or creating for the APC? Well, the president has been good enough to have said, go and uh, may give yourself up to them, right? He didn't give him any shade or cover. And the party has not said anything about it. Okay, to the extent that it's now with the EFCC, after all the hula balu, it will not have any impact on APC. The only thing is, if he's found guilty and is sent to jail, we put the spotlight on the successor, knowing that he practically handpicked Ododo and made him governor. Is it now the 